Hello, dears, and welcome to Al Husseini Virtual Lab Pathology Talks Tips and Practical Tips. Today, I'm going to share with you uh, an unusual case of endometrial carcinoma, the undifferentiated endometrial carcinoma, and how we can really reach into the diagnosis because it has important implications on the management and counseling of the patient. So, this is a case of a 60 year old female patient who presented with postmenopausal bleeding. And as you can see from the low power magnification, there is sheet like a growth pattern with no tendency at a glandular formation or for example papillary formation it's really the first thing that would probably come to mind is whether this is a case of lymphoma so once you have this at the back of your mind, you have really to think of undifferentiated endometrial carcinoma and on high power magnification. There is a tendency to discohesion of the tumor cells sometimes with fibrovascular cores with some tumor cells attached to the fibrovascular cores, giving an appearance sim uh, similar to alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma with some cells falling in between and then mitotic activity or perhaps Perhaps you could think, for example, of lymphoma and another high power magnification of the same tumor where you can see like a, a, a rhabdoid a, a like a cellular features with cells with abundant acidophilic cytoplasm eccentric nucleus growing in a mixoidish background. So again, is this lymphoma? For example, plasma cytoma, plasmacytic tumor, is this rhabdomyosarcoma? Once you start to wonder about this differential diagnosis in the endometrium, in an elderly patient, you have always to consider undifferentiated endometrial carcinoma. Of course, undifferentiated endometrial sarcoma should also come into the differential diagnosis. And here, this is where really the immunohistochemistry uh, becomes extremely important and how to interpret the immunohistochemistry. Now, typically, undifferentiated endometrial carcinoma is negative for Pax8. And this, for example, might cause some confusion or exclusion, for example, of carcinoma from the differential diagnosis. But remember, undifferentiated endometrial carcinoma is typically negative for Pax8. Now, with cytokeratin, very peculiar way of expression. Most of the tumor is completely negative with only focal staining in some of the tumor cells, the small groups of tumor cells, but these groups of tumor cells show strong pancytokeratin positivity. So regardless of the pancytokeratin that you're going to use, whether this is MNF uh, pancytokeratin or AE1, E3 or CAN 5.2, they tend to show almost the same feature. Most of the tumor cells are completely negative. However, there are small groups and pockets of a strongly positive a tumor cells. Now, this should be an excellent clue to the possibility that this represents an endometrial, uh, undifferentiated endometrial carcinoma. Vimentin is usually strongly positive. P53 shows the mosaic non-immutant pattern of staining, but with uh, uh, the mismatch repair a protein, immune stains, many of the cases of undifferentiated endometrial carcinomas, uh, more than one third of the cases tend to show loss of the nuclear staining for MLH1 and PMS2, but also sometimes for MSH6 and or MSH2. And this is an important support to the diagnosis because the other uh, entities within the differential diagnosis tend to be negative. So in conclusion, this is a case of undifferentiated endometrial carcinoma. Remember that this, these tumors tend to be Pax8 negative. It's important to remember for the primary diagnosis as well as when the tumor metastasizes because Pax8 will not be of help in sorting out the differential diagnosis. Remember that cytokeratin shows usually this very small group of strongly positive tumor cells amid other completely negative tumor cells and that the mismatch repair deficiency proteins can be of extreme help in supporting the diagnosis if they are lost, if the tumor is deficient. I hope you find this tip useful in your daily practice. Thank you.